In this video, I'm gonna show you my method to create Figma designs and convert them directly into Framer fully fledged websites. First, we're gonna take a look at how we can set up the Figma file itself. Then we're gonna take a look at the settings that we need in order to make the transition as seamless as possible. Let's get into it. So over here, we have a hero header from one of our many designs from our tile bit component library. And I just picked out this one because it's quite simple and we can do something quickly within this tutorial. So let's go through what we've got here. In this case, we we have a hero header which has a width layout of 1440 pixels and a height is set to hug. Now, if we don't have a section in auto layout, this is not going to work. You might as well just rebuild it directly in Framer and using any sort of conversion tool wouldn't really be worth it because you're gonna have to do it all manually anyways. So I recommend that you first have everything in your section that you wanna change over as auto layout. So here we have the hero header as auto layouts and we can just call this hero header 78 instead of that we can say tutorial for framer transition something like that so we know immediately which one it is all right now down here we have a layer called image and that is incorrect actually we should call it something just like a parent container something like that something simple and this is holding in all the actual content now you'll see here that the top top layer has a background fill so if we toggle that on and off we'll see that we have that color going back and forth the parent container is holding all the information and we have that again as a fill and then hug so it's containing all of the actual elements and we can see here that we have 88 pixels all around in padding horizontally and also vertically. And then our content itself, if we open that up, we have an image down here, which has a weird little layer here. Wonder what that means. And our column here is set up of two different text elements. So we've got this 80 pixel text, and then we have another one, which is H6. And we can just unlink that. And that is 20 pixels with a specific line height, spacing, all that. We'll get into that later on. But this image here, the reason why we have this icon with these kind of box around this, our usual auto layout, is that it's an absolute position element. What that means is that it ignores, as we can see here, the auto layout. So if I toggle that on and off, we'll see that it now does not ignore the auto layout. We can move it around as we would here, but this isn't an auto layout tutorial, it's a conversion tutorial. So let's go ahead and go back in there. So now that we have all this stuff ready to go, we have one more thing to keep in mind. It's that our colors here and the sizing and all of that will need to cascade down when we go into the responsive layout. And right now we only have the desktop version designed. So let's go ahead and grab our plugin here. And we're gonna use a plugin made by Framer called Figma to HTML by Framer or with Framer, click on that. Okay, now we get that success message, copied eight layers, paste in Framer. So I'm gonna go directly into Framer and we'll see that. Well, for now, I'm just gonna copy it and paste it outside of here and say it's uploading Figma images. Okay, and so it directly pastes inside of our desktop. So right off the bat, we see that we have a couple things that are wrong. Number one, we get this overflowing kind of a box here. So let's go into layers and see what's going on. Okay, so by getting started here, just when you paste it in, the desktop itself is not in layout mode. We need to go ahead and select layout mode. Just by doing that, we'll see that we're getting the content already starts to fit in. So when we go into Framer and we just paste in any section without having the layout mode, what we're basically telling it is basically if we have a frame inside of Figma and we're saying, all right, you fit in there, okay? But there's no constraints, there's no rules. So it's just basically acting as a group holder, right? Doesn't really make sense. But if we convert this to auto layout, now we get the section itself behaving like we want it to. And that's the exact same thing that we need to do here. So we just need to go into layout, click on that, and we'll see that we get something a little bit closer to what we need. I'm gonna rename this section because, uh, okay, we'll leave it, we'll leave that section, but I'm just add in here, hero. Okay, so this hero, this is gonna be our top section. And so our parent container now, we can start to play around with all the different layout sizing options that we've got here. We also have the content, which we can play around with. We've got the image that's moving around now. We've got the column down here. We've got the image down here, and then it is gonna be clipped out Let's see here. Okay, so then the height, we can go into fit content instead of fixed. And now we don't have that annoying white space anymore. And then if we wanted to just for, why not? We can add in a section down here. All right, so next up, you will notice that we don't have the breakpoint set up for tablet and mobile. The way we do that is quite simply by adding the tablet and phone breakpoint by clicking the plus up here. 
Now you can add in your own sizing and there's different breakpoints for specific iPhone sizes or different Android sizes. But if you just use the default ones, it's completely fine. You don't need to go above and beyond. Just by previewing this right now, we'll see that we have the desktop version looks pretty good, but as we can see, it's not scaling in any way, shape or form by any of the breakpoints. So let's go ahead and do that. So one of the main issues here is that this H2 or H1, this main heading, element is set as just a regular text style. It's not necessarily set as a specific style with different breakpoints for the different sizes. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to make this our H2. And then for this in the different breakpoints, we can add in large, medium or small. And sometimes when we do that automatically, it will create the different sizes that we need, which is great. So for example, we've got the top one is going to be 80 and then down to 64 and then down to 51. Now these can be changed as much as we need it to be, but it's quite simple to do this. So I'm just gonna keep it at maybe 48, which is a multiple of four, which is quite nice. All right, and we can do that with all those four. But we see that the line height stays the same. The letter spacing also stays the same, but we can change that to whatever we want. But let's just keep it there for now. And now if we go ahead and preview it again, just by clicking that plus, we can see that the H2 starts to get a little bit smaller. So let's go ahead and do that with our body text as well. Go into styles, create a new style, and we're gonna make this paragraph, sure. This body, we'll go into edit mode, and then we can add in the breakpoints. And again, we'll see that it automatically does that for us, which is great, but I want the small to stay at 16, or maybe 14, something like that because I don't really like when it gets too, too small. Okay, so now the text itself is good, but we have this parent element or the text elements that are kind of overflowing over our parent, which we need to fix. So let's take a look at the desktop element and see what's going wrong. So we have the content here, which has the width as relative, height as fixed, that's fine for now. And then we've got down here in the tablet, we've got relative and fixed. Okay, let's go down here. Okay, so here we see that the width is fixed and the height is fit, which is fine when we're in the, the larger ones because we can go as large as we want. But when we're going further and further down, we want to make sure that they kind of scale appropriately. So the cool thing about Framer is that when we design and develop in the desktop mode, if we don't change anything in the lower breakpoints, our designs and our actions will cascade down as we go. So for example, this element here, pay bills, get paid and manage cash flow. If we make this width to be fill or fit or relative, something like that, we'll see that it automatically changes all the way down. And that's because we're starting off in the desktop. So let's go ahead and do that again, go into fill. That's fine for now. And then in the column, we can add in our padding to our left and our right. And we can say, all right, let's give it 64 and 64, just as an example, eh, it's okay. And then maybe in desktop, I wanna just get rid of that. And we can say, okay, we don't need any, any padding there. So that looks fine in tablet, but let's see what's going on down here. Make that zero. And then the parent element is going a little bit bananas with the gap here. So we can just reduce that. Okay, let's see what else we got going on. Okay, so this width here, let's make it fill. Okay, and then the gap can be zero. Let's reduce it to maybe 48 is fine. Okay. So that's looking a little bit better. So let's go ahead and change the image, which is our last element here. And because it's an absolute, because it's kind of floating in its own space, we can just go ahead and manually change the size as we need to, and we can remove the layout. It's not necessarily important here since we want to be able to freely move the stuff. So I want to just make this smaller. I'm gonna remove that layout. Something like that is fine. All right, so actually let's move this a little bit to the side, and then we can just crop this just a little bit more. Instead of high, we can go fixed, which you really shouldn't do, but for this tutorial, why not? All right, the last thing I'm gonna do is go back into this heading here because I'm not necessarily liking it in the small one. And since this text is gonna be 14 pixels, I believe, we can go into 40 and that should be fine, but let's reduce the padding in our left and right, just by one or two. Okay, so something like that, it's fine. Anyway, I'm going, I'm going too, too crazy here. But by doing these things, we can manage how our design from Figma gets exported and placed inside of Framer. And now the really cool thing is that we can publish this site and it's a real live site. So this is a site that scales and works properly and can be searched on the internet and all those good stuff. Now, I wanna actually go through one more thing because I didn't like how this looked on the larger breakpoints. So you see how it kind of splits up in 
one. So what we can do is we can actually go even larger, call this 1440. And I'm just going to move this all the way down here, and actually go even bigger. All right. So what we can do is we can create a max for the size, which is good. So for the width, we have a min and max here as well. So I'm just adding this here so I can actually visualize. So max width, we can call it, I don't know, something like a fixed size. That way we stay within our bounds. So we can go 1200 and not percent. We want 1200 pixels. And now we can see that we have capped the size that our design is gonna be published at on the larger breakpoints, which is great. And so let's just say, yeah, let's keep it at 920. And now when we go ahead and publish this, we can see that, yeah, the design isn't kind of getting overloaded again, except it is there. So let's go ahead and see why. Okay, we need to click update first. That makes more sense. All right, there you go. So now this looks respectable in all of our breakpoints. And then we have that design kind of floating to the right side here on mobile, which is really nice, adds a bit of character. So yeah, that kind of concludes this conversion from Figma to Framer. If you guys have any questions or are wondering on anything that I did, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to help you guys out. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.